Welcome to the Quick Start Guide for 3D Visualization using Luna's Odyssey System. 3D Visualization is a useful tool because it allows us to take an instrumented part and observe the strain or temperature changes that it experiences visually and in real time, making it much easier to understand where interesting things are happening on a component. The goals of this video are to make it clear how to load a 3D model, map a fiber path, assign sensor locations, and display live Odyssey data. The example part we will be using today is the right half of a carbon fiber fender. It is instrumented on its inside surface with one of Luna's fiber optic strain sensors. The sensor is able to continuously measure the change in strain parallel to its path everywhere that it is bonded to the part. Combined with 3D visualization, we are able to see the current strain state of the fender in great detail. After initializing the software, we first need to open the main options window by right-clicking the open field. As a quick breakdown of the options that we have, the image feature lets us load a 2D picture of a component if we don't have a 3D model. STL lets us load a 3D model. Fiber location is where we can save or load a fiber mapping profile. View lets us save or load a model orientation and contour setting configuration. Both the color setting and contour setting tabs allow us to set color mapping preferences such as scale and line thickness. Playback setting is where we can import saved Odyssey datasets or export a video of a data playback. And finally, the view setting feature gives precise control of the visualization window's size in pixels. We won't be going into detail on all of these features in this video, but it's important to be aware that they exist. Now to get started, we will import our 3D model by navigating to the STL tab. We select the model we wish to load and open. Note that this feature can only import STL files that are saved in an ASCII format. The model opens to a default position, but can be manipulated with the mouse controls. We can zoom in or out with the scroll wheel, rotate by holding down the left mouse button, we can change the center of this rotation by clicking with the middle mouse button on the part. And finally, we can translate the part by holding down the right mouse button. Now that we have our model, we need to begin assigning a fiber path to its surface. To do this, we navigate to the routing tab on the top left corner. Notice that routing defaults us mapping onto channel 1. It's important that this channel matches with the physical channel the sensor is connected to when we capture the Odyssey's data stream. If they do not match, the data will not display. To add a path, we can hold control and left-click the surface of the part to create two starting points. The default size of these points is a bit too small for our model, so we will need to adjust the thickness of our fiber path by opening our options window again and using the contour setting feature. Let's raise the thickness value from 0.1 to 2. Now we can clearly see what we're mapping onto our part. If we zoom in, we can connect our points by holding control and left-clicking the points in series. The line created is the shortest path the software can find between the two points along the surface. For more control over the path, we simply add more points. If we aren't happy with the placement of our points, we can reposition them by first selecting the point and then a new location for it to move to, once again left-clicking while holding the control key. To delete points or lines, hold control and click with the right mouse button on the undesired elements. Now that we have our fiber path, we need to tell the software what sections of the data it will need to display along the section. To do this, we can select a point and assign it a measurement position along the sensor. These values can be obtained by performing touch to locate. As an example, let's take the end of our segment and assign it 5 meters. This value needs to be in millimeters, so we will enter 5000 into the corresponding cell. For the start of our segment, 
let's assign it 4 meters by entering 4000. Now if we were to connect to the Odyssey, the software would display all the sensor measurements between 4 and 5 meters along the segment. We can assign all of our points manually in this way, or we can use the reinterpolate button to linearly assign values to all the points in between our start and end points. So for example, if we add two new points to our segment and redefine the ending, the reinterpolate button will assign new values to all of the points in between our start and end positions. We can save our fiber path and location assignments by opening our options window, navigating to the fiber location feature, and selecting save. For this vendor, a complete sensor layout has already been saved, so we'll load that now. You can see that the path has been broken into 23 separate segments, ignoring most of the turnarounds. All of the segments have their measurement locations assigned, and at this point we are ready to display some data. At the Odyssey controller, our sensor is connected and the test has already been armed and started. Under the Streaming Properties tab, we need to check the OMSP enabled box to initialize the data streaming. Next, we need to use the IP address and port number displayed here to connect our 3D visualization software to the data stream. To do this, we go back to the Contour tab and change the values under Odyssey Host to correspond with the values displayed under the Odyssey Streaming Properties tab. After pressing the Connect button, it will take a few seconds to initialize before displaying the live data. As the fender is deformed, we can see the strain measurements from the component's surface appear in real time on our 3D model. Sections and tension correspond with the color red, whereas sections and compression correspond with the color blue. Now that the data is coming in, we may need to make a few adjustments. As we can see in the bottom left corner, we have a length versus strain plot available to us. If we right click the plot, we can open the chart settings and adjust the default minimum and maximum values for the axes to match the sensor. We can quickly do this with the fit tool, but we will set the strain range manually to plus and minus 300 microstrain in expectation of the higher strains once deformed. We can also adjust the limits of the color scale by opening the contour settings again from the options window and adjusting the range to match that of our plot. There are several types of color scales to choose from to better communicate the data being displayed if desired. This concludes our quick start guide to set up 3D visualization software in combination with live data from an Odyssey system.